factory and finance the entire thing. Well, no surprise, that relationship did not last long, right? My dad actually ended up marrying somebody who was ridiculously financially savvy, and I think she's somewhere inside the room. Who are you inside the room? Finance the entire thing. My, my other mom, somewhere inside her, maybe are running around the room. The bottom line was this. I grew up with a completely messed up psychology when it came to money. And it wasn't until in my mid-20s when I met one of my mentors who he showed me something which I'm going to show you. The bottom line is this, guys. Money is a tool. Nothing more, nothing less. Say that out loud. Nothing more, nothing less. Listen, if you're a jerk, money makes you more of a jerk. If you are Mother Teresa, money makes you more of Mother Teresa. It is just a tool. But this is what I know. How many of you know someone that doesn't have enough money? I don't know about you guys. I don't want to be that person. And not that I feel bad for them or less for them. All I think to myself is that person was never taught what I'm about to teach you. They never understood that your money is a tool and just like an app on a phone, if you don't use it and play the game right and follow the steps, you don't get the results. It's not how much money you earn. It is what you do with the money that matters. You guys with me on this? So I want you to write in your notes the following. There's been a lot of research on this, and you've probably seen something like this before, especially if you've ever met with a financial planner or, you know, you watch CNN Financial. They all say the same thing. Write down 5, 15, and 80. 5, 15, and 80. 5%, 15%, and 80%. 5%, 15%, and 80%. And as all the studies show... It says 5% of the planet are basically generational wealth. They have created generational wealth. It's not the top 1%, guys. Somebody who is worth $5 million, who has paid off their home, and when they pass on, they transfer all that wealth over, that's generational wealth. You with me on this? Some of them are worth millions, some of them it's tens, some of them are hundreds, some of them are now billions. But that's the 5%. The 15%, write this in your notes, you ready? They are the middle class. They got a house, they got a little savings, they go on a few vacations, and they're comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that 15%. But where do you think the 80% sits? Darcy, the 80%? 80%, 80%, look around the room, potentially 80% of this room, I don't think so, but potentially with the numbers, 80% of this room, when they are older, either A, have to work to make money, or B, are dependent upon the government or their family to subsidize their lifestyle. 80%, 80%. Some of you are thinking to yourself, my kids better be successful. 5% generational wealth. And it starts at $5 million and above. 15% comfortable. My in-laws are 93 and 90 years old. They have a million dollar net worth. They're in that 15%. Houses paid for that they bought for $11 300 years ago. Right in Anaheim, California on Bruce Street. Paid that sucker off. Every time I talk to my father-in-law, you see my Ford stock, right? He's not, he started buying Ford stock like in 1948. You with me? Like I had a dollar, then I had two shares, and then three shares. But over time, guess what? He's in that 15%. How many of you know someone right now though, that based upon their money behaviors and their money psychology, they're clearly going to end up in the 80%. Don't point at them if they're in this room. And don't like, you know, make them wrong. But I'd like you to consider maybe they just never heard what I'm about to share with you. So I'm going to show you guys a business strategy for your money. You guys up for that? A business strategy. I'm not going to tell you what to invest in. That's not my role. I'm going to show you ideas of what the very best people do. I'm going to put it up on the big screen, which means the team's going to keep it here the whole time. And you're going to take detailed copious notes. So here's the first thing I want to show you. This is what 80% of real estate professionals do. 80% of real estate professionals, 
they get a commission check and that check goes into their personal account. Their personal account. 80%. They get a check and it goes into their personal account. They go home and maybe they say, here honey, or here I'm by myself, and I put it in my account, but this personal account is not an LLC, an S Corp, a limited life, you know, limited partnership. It's not a corporation, it's a personal thing. Now I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands if that's you, but I am gonna say this to you. I would like to thank you for paying lots in taxes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you overpaying what you should be paying. Keep up the good work. So what's rule number one? Should I have a corporation? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? So check this out, guys. If you answered this, don't feel bad. I, I will teach this stuff at conferences, and I'm blown away by 10 people in the room, 10,000 people in the room, the number of people that go, yeah, I thought about doing that, but like, I don't know, like, which one do I pick? I'm no expert. Here's what you do. You call your accountant and say, I think I need to get incorporated. Which do you recommend based on where I live, what country, what state, etc.? But rule number one is no one leaves this conference in 30 days. If you are not incorporated and you don't own your business and now your checks come to blankety blank LLC, not you personally, because now you get all the tax advantages. Yes or no, guys? But I got to tell you, this is what the 80% does. And this is clearly bad. Let me show you what the 15% do. I want you to draw this out. I want you to imagine a world where, and by the way, did you guys notice the subtle little difference? This one says, check. This one says, checks. Because people that get checks understand the following. I get the check, it goes directly into my business account, right? I get it wired in from escrow. I don't get physical checks anymore. The money just gets transferred over. You with me? Oh, my escrow company, my title company, blah, 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 won't do it. Great, get the physical check. But it goes into a business account, which means now, as you can see, I'm going to have four different accounts at my bank. Four different accounts at my bank. I'm going to have my business account. I'm going to have my tax account, excuse me, three accounts, tax account, business account, and my home account, my personal account. Here's the reality, my friends. If I, if I can encourage and inspire, you know, every single one of you to just do that and then follow the rule. You ready? Write this in your notes. Above the tax account, I want you to write down, let's, let's do an imaginary check, and I want you to show you how much money goes where. So at the top, let's say that's a $10,000 check, just for easy numbers. $10,000 check. So all of a sudden, $10,000 hits my business account, and the first thing that happens is instantaneously, 3,300 of the 10,000 goes directly into my tax account. 3,300 automatically into my tax account. Because some of you think when you get a check for 10 grand that you actually have 10 grand. How many of you are in the state of California or New York or in the country of Canada? You get a check for 10 grand and you're lucky if you get 4,500. That's the real deal. Now you're an entrepreneur, you own your own business, you're gonna start t taking better write-offs, you're gonna pay more attention to your accountant, you're probably gonna have your Uncle Larry, who's done your taxes forever, stop and actually hire a CPA who's gonna pay attention. But 3,300 bucks automatically goes there. Then 3,300 or less goes into your business account. And this is where I run my business. A check comes in, I've got marketing. A check comes in, I've got expenses. A check comes in, I've got my MLS dues. Everything that I need to run my business, every check, 3,300, 3,300, and then what goes over here? 3,400 bucks to my home. Now it sounds like you might need a home budget. What do you guys think? Because many times, what do we do? We get a check and we just start spending the money. By the way, if you look at this, the very first one, this is the, the cardinal sin. This is what poor people do. They get a check and they just start spending. 
Who knows someone like that? Say I. Matter of fact, the bigger the check, the more they start spending. And they never think about debt reduction because they'll do that later. Because I've worked so hard, and this was such a challenging transaction, and that's why I'm going to overindulge and overspend on myself. And we know the financial roller coaster you're actually putting yourself through. This, my friends, is what the people do that take care of their money. They know Uncle Sam or Revenue Canada or Mexico, they're taking their money no matter what. So when I come in, that check comes in, I don't say to myself, I get it all. It automatically goes there. I leave a piece here, and the balance goes here. Make sense? So tell your buddy, are you going to do this, yes or no? Yes or no? Now here's what I know. Look up here, guys. The number of clients that have done this, and then I see them a year later, and they go, I have $15,000 in my savings account. I've never had that. But more importantly, I've paid all my taxes. Like, I'm on time, and I have money inside my business account, and it's the end of the year, and my accountant said I need to take a dividend, so I'm getting a big chunk of change at the end of the year. This is awesome. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like, does anybody like nice things? You know, family trips, vacations, memories, holidays, you know, maybe a new outfit. The challenge is, if you keep that psychology without requiring or putting in the discipline, you know what you end up with? A bunch of nice things and a shit ton of debt. So do me a favor. Tell your buddy, do you know someone personally that has too much debt? Anybody, anybody inside this room? Now listen, there's smart debt and there's bad debt. And I'm not going to go too in-depth with you on this, but you know the difference. You know, credit card debt at 19% is dumb debt. Buying a house and getting a mortgage with 3.5% is really good debt. So we all know the difference. And I just want you to be mindful. I want you to take care of your money. But now, did you guys get a photo of this? Did you capture it? Are you sure? Are you promising to do this? Okay. Do you want to know what the wealthy agents do? This is what the wealthy agents do. It's a little more complex. It's a little more complex. I would get it up on the big screen over there, guys, and take a photo of it. But more importantly, I want you to draw the whole thing out in your notes. Draw the whole thing out in your notes. This is what the wealthy do. This is the stuff that no one taught me. So all until Bill Mitchell pulled me aside and said, what do you do with your money? And I'm like, I don't know, I just get the check and I throw it inside my account and I spend it like crazy and I never have any cash and I'm always in trouble. Draw this out. So play a game with me. You get a $10,000 check. The $10,000 check goes to what account? To what account? And 33% of it goes automatically where? to my tax account, because I don't really have 10,000. I really have like, you know, 6,000 and change. That's the real deal. So 3,300 automatically here. Then I take another 3,300 over here or less, because I don't know your business expenses. But by the way, guys, your marketing cost should be no more than 10% of your expected gross revenue. Your marketing cost should be no more than 10% of your expected gross revenue. So a percentage of that 3,300 is going to go for your direct mail and your marketing and your email and your Zillow leads and your Facebook ads and the prints and the brochures and everything else. But no more than 10%. No more than 10%. Got it? Because you're incorporated now, your car and a piece of your house and all kinds of other things get written off into or from this account. So we like that. But you might also have inside there, ready guys? A virtual assistant, an assistant. Well, where is that person going to be paid from? You got a check for 10 grand. You didn't actually get 10 grand. You got 6,700. 3,300 goes inside here. Now I can pay my assistant. It starts to work like clockwork. You with me? But you can see, this is where it gets interesting. Some people call this other account your investment account. I like to think of it as my financial hub. It's where the money comes in, and then it gets divided again. 
Now, I'm not a financial planner, nor do I, you know, even, would even attempt to be, but I'm giving you just an example of what that extra $3,400 could go towards. So maybe you need, because you do two deals a month, you're like, I need four grand a month to come into the home expenses, so I'm going to take, you know, two grand of my 3300 or the 3400 Where does the rest go? Do you have a retirement account? Do you put money in the stock market or in bonds or whatever you believe in, 401K? Do you have an account where you just put cash to buy real estate? Why not, on every check, take 5% of every check, put into an account called cash for real estate? And you just watch that sucker grow like crazy over time, two years. And also you're like, I got 185,000 bucks in cash sitting inside that account. I should go buy a duplex. I should go buy a fourplex. I now have the money to go do these deals. Retirement account, real estate cash account. I use this because I did it you know, with my kids, a 529B account, which is a college fund. Cash account. Since we did real estate cash, why don't we call this the fun account? The fun account. You know, the I'm going to go spend this money on stupid stuff and throw it away later and not care. Or I'm going to take this money and I'm going to use it for vacations and holidays. What action are you going to take in the next 30 days around this conversation? There's no more information. That's it. Tell your buddy, what actions are you going to take in the next 30 days? Do it right now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We have a number of events coming up, and we'd love to have you there. Boom. Okay. Let's get this training started. Um, <clears throat> thought that was a pretty insightful video there. Um, Tom Ferry. <clears throat> what, what was you guys' takeaways? Let's, uh, let's see inside of the chat area. I see Casey wrote something. Um, business expenses are low in the FX trading biz. Let's see. Oh, we also got um, some people on YouTube. Oh, cool. So um, any insights that you guys have? Any major takeaways that you got from the training? We'll wait. Is LLC helpful in trading? Yes. Um, yes, it, it is helpful. Uh, any, any type of business that you're paying yourself, um, paying yourself through the, the business account is definitely going to help you out with business expenses as, as you saw in that video. Um, for me, I have about seven LLCs and it doesn't have to be an LLC. LLC is the most popular one. It's one of the latest ones that uh, for incorporating. Um, uh, one sec, I see someone sent a message, but it, it was direct message. Make sure when you're sending the message, put um, where it says to, just put to everyone in the meeting and then send the message. So let's see. Um, yeah, de definitely incorporating. Again, in that video training, he mentioned uh, about getting an accountant to help you out because it, it varies depending on your state and what you want to do. Um, I'm not going to advise on that just because I'm not like a, a tax professional there, a licensed professional for that. Uh, but definitely advise and account for that. Uh, let's see. So someone sent privately. No one can see it here, but it says it opened my eyes to the checks thing. Uh, we just use all that money and don't make it work for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, that final part right there. This is this is a lot of what I do personally when it comes to like. Um, business income or, or anything like that, e even from, well, I'm already investing. So it's, it's a little tricky. So basically back then when I first got started, I was receiving checks through, through doing affiliate marketing. This was back when I had quit my job, didn't know what I was going to do. Um, 
I received income through, through affiliate marketing. So basically I was promoting other people's products. Um, and then from that income that I was receiving, I was putting it into investments or I was learning, you know, like purchasing training. So trainings and things like that, that's investing. Um, you're investing in yourself at that point, which is why I created that slogan for Market Massive Academy, invest in yourself, you're worth it. Basically the, the best investment that you can make uh, is going to be on yourself. And there was actually this thing that I saw on social media the other day where it was, it was um, something related to like $1,000. And $1,000 in Bitcoin in 2019 would have been like 8,000 whatever now. So something like that. So basically like good returns for the thousand dollars. And then a thousand dollars put into the stock market would have been like, I think it showed like 5,000. And then it said something like a thousand dollars invested into yourself, like in education or training or like creating business or things like that, um, turned into like 500,000. Because the, the thing with investing in yourself is there is like unlimited potential when it comes to how much you can make there. Um, especially in business and in and investing there, you can make a whole lot of money, which is why if you've ever heard me say this before, I recommend uh, reading this book called The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. And basically focusing on being a business owner and investor, that's where you're going to be making the most money. Um, so yeah, let's see some more here. Uh, okay. Um, I'm from Canada and last week CPA advised me about this, got my sole proprietorship done. Uh, this video, uh, so this video validated. Yeah, so there's actually this thing with, with sole proprietorship. Um, so basically there's, there's a way to be taxed as an S corp, um, with an LLC. So you can, you can have an LLC and be taxed as an S corp. And that's personally for me, that's what I, I do for some of my businesses is, is that type of uh, tax structure. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And sorry about my throat. You, you're probably going to hear me like, uh, kind of clearing my throat a bit. I was sick actually the past week. Um, it wasn't COVID. I got tested for COVID. It wasn't that. I, I don't know what it was. It was some type of flu or something, but I had like sore throat and everything. Uh, let's see. So off topic a bit, but how long did it take uh, you to make consistent profitable trades after starting training? Um, I actually posted something on my social media today where, uh, I started back in like 2015, 2016, I believe. Um, and the, the time frame that it took for me to start seeing consistent results was pretty instant. Um, so some people know my story, some people don't, but basically I started off with 1500. My first week I was able to flip that from 1500 to 3000. And this was during the time that I didn't even know like Forex was real. Like it, I just saw the charts and it, it just didn't look real to me. It seemed like, like a video game. Like you just see a bunch of, a bunch of lines. And when I was seeing that, um, like I, I was already into like stocks and stocks was something that's more like reputable that lots of people do uh, inside the stock market. When it came to Forex, it wasn't something that I knew about. And I thought it was like kind of, kind of fake. Um, and then, so basically that 1500, I turned into 3000 and then I withdrew the full 3000. And from that 3000, I was, um, I, I just saw it in my bank account. And then from there, that's, that was kind of like that spark that that told me like, this is real. You can actually make money. Um, and then from there, I actually put the money back and started trading from there, but pretty consistently, I didn't hit a hundred percent every single week like that, but, um, yeah, it, it was starting to compound from there. <clears throat> uh, so, all right, let's get started with the training here. Um, 
if there's any other questions, I, I'll get to that soon. Uh, but for now, this training right here is going to be something that I personally use. Uh, well, everything that I talk about inside of meetings, I usually always like personally use it. So this one right here, some of you guys might know this strategy, some of you guys might not. Um, it has to do with candlestick patterns. Now, you do have to be somewhat knowledgeable with when it comes to trading, uh, but this strategy here can be applied to any market. It's not just gonna be the Forex market. Uh, you can use it for stocks, crypto, um, really anything here. So let's first put my annotation tool, go, okay. Um, and I'm going to clear this text. There we go. Okay. So this part here is um, when it comes to candlesticks, candlesticks is, is going to be very important to help you out when it comes to price action trading um, or really when, when it comes to technical analysis, my, my main strategy of trading, price action is like the main thing. It's what's happening with the price. Is it going towards an uptrend? Is it going towards a downtrend? And so there is this candlestick pattern that it's, uh, it's a very good candlestick pattern that I'm, I always look at. Um, one of my main ones, there's, there's a couple different ones that I look at, but if you just stick to this one here, you'll notice that it's very consistent. Like you can even place a trade off of just this one confirmation and and be a profitable trader, or at least over 50% winning trader. So this strategy right here, um, some people call it the pin bar. Uh, what I call it is a shooting star. So basically with a candlestick, you have the open and the close of the candlestick and depending on which time frame you're on, um, it could be different. So like if I'm on the 15 minute time frame, it could take 15 minutes from the time that it opens all the way to, to close. It will it'll take 15 minutes and then the next candlestick will form. So with this right here, this one right here is called the shooting star pattern. And so with a shooting star, if you think about like what a shooting star looks like, I'm just gonna pull up an image. Um, shooting star, let me go to images. Okay, so this is probably a, a good description right here. So you, you have like the main star, right? And then you have like what's following the star. Uh, I don't know exactly what that's called, but basically when, with this pattern, it looks like a shooting star. We have like the body right here. And then we have this long wick um, right here. And basically what the wick is telling you is that within this time frame, the price went all the way up to this point and then it came down, which this right here, what it's telling me is there's, there was a lot of buyers, but sellers pushed the price back down. And because of the um, Forex is based off of supply and demand and buyers and sellers is someone on the other side of the screen that's trading and there's going to be orders of a lot of buyers or a lot of sellers so within this time frame there would have been a lot of buyers and then sellers push the price down now um so what this is telling me is that it's usually when price is going towards an uptrend and then it'll give you this pattern and then after you see this pattern it's telling you that it's going to reverse going down Okay, so that's going to be for the shooting star pattern. And then we have the exact opposite, which is called a hammer. And for the hammer, I don't need to pull up an image of that. Basically, you have the stick of the hammer, and then this is the body. All right, so it's, it's the exact opposite. But for this pattern, we're going to be looking for it when the price is shooting down. We spot the pattern, and then we expect for price to shoot up after we see that pattern. Okay, so this one right here is called the hammer. Now, I'm just gonna go on to my, 
onto the actual charts and point out the the shooting star and the hammers here. So um, let's see. So like right here, this candlestick here is a shooting star pattern. Uh, so it's right, that candlestick right there. Shooting star, um, you can see that it was pushing up and then we have that there and then now it's starting to push down. I actually mentioned with this Euro JPY price that it's expected to drop down to here. We'll get into like why I think it's gonna drop down to here. Um, but, but it's pretty basic. It's based off of like support and resistance. Um, Robert said, hammer time, can't touch this. That's funny. All right, so we can see that like price was shooting up right here. I don't see any pattern here that tells me it's going to go down. Um, well, there is a pattern, but it's not the shooting star, the shooting star pattern that I'm looking for. So we can see right here, price was shooting up. And then right here, we see the shooting star pattern. What happened after the shooting star pattern? Price shot down. Okay, so anytime you see the shooting star, expect price to shoot down. Right here, there's another shooting star pattern. And then right after that, price shot down. Um, it kind of consolidated a little bit, but then it, it dropped down. Let's see. So for now, I'm, I'm gonna be pointing out shooting star patterns. Let's see. Uh, and I'm looking mainly on these top points. So just looking at the tops, these very top points here. Um, now here, this is kind of a shooting star pattern. So I'm about to explain what's not a shooting star pattern. And this right here is not a shooting star. And the reason for that is because when, when you have the candlestick and then you have the wick, Okay. Um, so this part of the, the body, if the body is about halfway, that's not valid. Um, so, so halfway means like from this very top point to this very bottom point, if we see that this is about halfway, that is not valid. I like looking for, for this to show somewhere around like 25% or like 35, like so, somewhere around this range. So not the halfway point, but more, more towards this way, showing more, more of a longer wick than the body. So the body should be smaller than the, than the wick, okay? So if you can see right here, from this very top wick to this very top of body, uh, top of this wick here, it's about halfway or even higher than these two points. So that would not be considered the shooting star. These other ones that I was pointing out, you can see like the halfway point for this would have been probably somewhere around here for that shooting star. And then here, halfway point was probably about right there for that shooting star. So definitely the body was below those points. Keep that in mind because that's, that's super important. Um, okay, so let's look for more, one more shooting star. This one right here, we can see long wick, but the body was passed, so that's not it. Um, now here, this one, this one's it right here. You can see the body's um, pretty short. The halfway mark of that shooting star is about here. So definitely did it. And then you can see right after price shot down. Okay, so that's a shooting star. Now, someone asked, does the color of the shooting star matter, green and red? It doesn't matter. If you can see right here, um, I put it, this one's green. Now, it is preferred that it's red. That, that's something to keep in mind because now it depends on the color of your charts, but usually people's charts are going to be green and red. Uh, some people change it up. Um, but it's preferably red because what that shows you is definitely a lot more sellers in the market during that time frame. So um, like within 15 minutes, all this happened and it would be preferred to be, to be red there. 
Uh, now, red when it's a shooting star and then green when it's a hammer. Okay. It could be red or green, but I'm just saying it's best when it's that way. So now let's look for hammers. So the hammers, we're looking for those at the bottom, at the bottom of the price. So anywhere like down here. So I can actually notice a hammer right here in this area. Uh, let me delete this. So there is a hammer right here. Now it would have been preferred if this hammer was green, but it, it is red and it's fine. Um, so did the hammer, we can see that it, if I was to do like the halfway mark from this top point, this top point of this wick down to this bottom point, the halfway mark is probably about here. So we can see the body uh, is, is in a good position. So right after that, we can see price went from a downtrend, gave us his pattern, and then shot up. Okay, so that's that. Let's see if I can spot another hammer. Um, I can see one right here, but I, I want to spot him like right at the bottom points. That, that would be considered one there. I'm just going to look for some that are more clear. Uh, let's see here, nothing here. Um, there kind of is something here. Um, again, it, it would have been preferred if this was a green hammer, but this one right here, it did kind of come down, but then it did do its reversal. Uh, I'll look for one more here. Um, there's one right here, it shot up. Let me look for a clear one here. Uh, there's one here and then shot up. Um, look for a cleaner one. Okay, so like right here. But I wanna look for a green one. So this red one right here, it shot up. Look for a green one. This is not one, um, we, we want kind of a bigger body. This is more of like a, um, can't think of the name right now, but it's like an indecisive candle. It's just not really going anywhere. Let's see, Raf said, don't, don't suppose you can give your analysis on current slash last few candles. Uh, I could uh, actually mention that there was a shooting star pattern for Euro JPY. Um, but one sec, let me see how that's looking. Yeah, Euro JPY is dropping pretty nice. Um, okay, let's find that nice cream candle here. Um, This one's red, it did do hammer, but it's red. Just wanna show a green one. Okay, right here. Nice green candle, went from a downtrend, gave that candle and then shot up. Okay, so um, now let's get into the actual like, how I would get into a trade for this. So, when it comes to like these shooting star and and uh, the hammers, let me go back to this very beginning. So currently, right now, I'm on the 15 minute time frame for Euro JPY. Um, if I see the fifth, if I see the the uh, let's say a hammer on the 15 minute, it probably won't show the same on the 30 minute or the one hour. So it changes based off of the time frame you're in. Um, sometimes I might see a shooting star on the one hour, but I don't see it on the 15. So whichever time frame you're on, it's important because each each of these time frames have its own support and resistance. So like if I go currently right now, there is a shooting star right here. And support, I actually pointed it out. It's right here. 
that support uh, resistance are right here. Because I'm looking to get in for a sell on this uh, based off the shooting star, um, what I do is, because I'm on the 15 minute, what you can do is you can wait for this, this candle to close. So after 15 minutes, this candle will close and then it'll open right here. This can be your entry point. So I'm gonna put right here, entry point. And so entry point is the start of the new candle, okay? So after 15 minutes on the 16 minute, it's going to open. And when it opens, that's where you enter in for a sell. And the way that I would do it is enter in for a sell here, take profit at the support and stop loss is going to be above the wick, okay? Above the wick is going to be stop loss. Take profit is going to be at the support. So if we were to enter in this one, currently right now we would have been in profit. It's most likely gonna drop even more down to, to this area. And I don't think it's gonna go up to here before it reaches down there. Um, I'll show you on these other ones. So like this, this uh, shooting star right here, this one's actually a better shooting star just because this is a higher uh, the highest point compared to this point here. So it's fairly close to each other. Uh, this would have been a better selling point. And, and so you want to sell at the, at the open of the next candle. So after 15 minutes, it's doing this whole thing. And then you want to place a sell. Uh, we can see it closes right here. So we place a sell there. Stop loss would be above the wick and then take profit, we're going to make take profit at, at a support level. So support level for here would have been right about here. It was once resistance, price broke through, gave us this pattern, we sell, take profit down to here. So if you would have placed this sell right here, it would have hit its take profit. Now, it's not always going to hit its take profit, but the chances of it hitting is going to be very high. All right. Um, for this other candlestick pattern, if we get in on, on the close, it would have been right there. Stop loss above, um, above the wick, not super tight. Like if we would have made it super tight, it would have closed out right there. So like a little bit of room to breathe and then take profit would have been right there. So this would have been about a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, if we would have placed that sell, we would have hit its take profit right there. Okay. Um, let me look for another one that I pointed out uh, right here. So this is an area of resistance, which is support when price breaks through. We see this candle. We place a sell right when it closes. So it closed right there. Stop loss above the wick. It looks like it hit its stop loss, but it didn't it actually drop down, hit its take profit first. And then it came up and then it went up to that area, but we would have closed out in profit first because it hit that support level. So um, Let's see, someone's asking what time frames bot taking trades. Uh, we're not really gonna be talking about bot trades right now. Uh, right now it's gonna be more like personal trades, um, but the, the bot doesn't, um, it doesn't have a time frame. It, it looks at like market orders and has a lot of like data, uh, not based off of like candlesticks or anything like that. Um, Let's uh, okay. so all right, so so that's how to place the sells when you see that shooting star pattern. Now to place buys, you want to look for the the hammer. And so right here for this hammer here, we place long positions and we place it right where it 
right where it closes that 15 minute candlestick. So it would have been right, uh, it closed right there. Stop loss would be below the wick, a little bit of room to breathe. And then take profit would be right here. So it was previously support, price came up, it broke through the support, hit like resistance right there, came back down, gave that hammer, and then it came back up. And then so take profit would be right there. So if you see, if we were to place this trade, it would have hit its take profit right after the hammer. Okay, so very useful, very useful. Right here, there is a hammer. Uh, this is one of the situations where you probably would have lost the trade. Um, but I wouldn't have placed a trade on this one just because like, for, for me personally, I look for more than, more than um, three confirmations when getting in on a trade. Uh, so one of them is definitely like, it does a higher high. I'm expecting a higher low. This definitely passed the 63 point, uh, the 63.8 on the Fibonacci. So this is like down into the 88s, even down to hit support. So definitely didn't have like the, the type of, um, the type of price action that I would preferred right there. Um, yeah, we, we could see it drop down to 88.6. So that wouldn't have been good. Um, I would have looked more for these areas of support down here. So like I would have looked anywhere here for a hammer. This one doesn't kind of has a hammer, but no, because it's at like the 50% mark right there. So that's not it. Um, so right here, I would have got in just because of like price action, right? Higher highs, higher lows. We see the hammer right there, place a buy right when it closes. So, uh, this candle closed right there, stop loss below that wick area. Take profit would be up to this resistance level up here. Now, that could be one of the take profits, or you can have a sooner one right here just because of like risk to reward is already really good. So we could have take profit one right there. And then clone. And take profit two up here. So I would have hit both the take profits. Um, and it is going towards the uptrend anyway. So it's like, it's more likely going to reach higher highs. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, uh, it's very easy. Um, something about trading is a lot of people, they complicate it, co complicate the trading. Or I think one of the things that really messes people up is they want to find something when they when they don't really see anything like, like they're trying to force a trade. So usually you can catch yourself doing this when you jump on your chart and you want to place a trade right away. Um, the heck someone sent in from a different device. Oh, I think my, my wife is using the Mac it's logged in. Um, okay. So Yeah, so anyways, you can spot it out, but you want to be able to have more confirmations. Like for this one, this one's a good confirmation for the shooting star because like I noticed there's strong areas of resistance. Strong areas of resistance. And if, if you see a strong area, then and you see that candlestick pattern, then it should tell you that it should be expected to reverse. I think overall, this is expected to drop like pretty far down. I would say at least down to here like, let's say these levels here um or even lower down to these levels here i would say safely like probably right there um and then yeah to drop all the way down to here the type of um reversal that's needed let's see it's 
So I would say it's going to drop down to at least 38.2. And then the next point is going to be somewhere around that 50, 61.8 mark. But then after that, that's going to be like close out. You're done because uh, there is going to be a chance of reversal somewhere around these areas here. Cool. Appreciate that, Robert. Um, yeah. If, if you guys are, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, oh, so we finally hit that take profit level that I, that I pointed out there. Um, yeah. Euro JPY is dropping pretty nicely right now. Let's see, I think it's going to break that pretty soon. Um, yeah. I'm just keeping an eye on that. Cause I'm, I have some trades open. People inside the bot have this trade open as well. Yeah, we have Euro JPY sales open right now. <clears throat> um, okay, so KCFX said, wait, let me see. Yeah, we have a message before that. What's your opinion? Uh, we need to look only a couple pairs or we need to point out maximum pairs. So I would suggest sticking with the majors if you're new, uh, stick to the majors so you can get familiar with how they move. They're, they're pretty like, they're pretty smooth for the most part. Um, once you start getting into like, excuse me, like GBP, NZD or things like that, like you're, you're going to be, um, you're going to be not, not doing so well there. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, is there any indicator that you use to help find these patterns? Um, so trading view actually has one. Let me see. I think it's this one right here. It's called the all patterns thing. Um, BE stands for the bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. Um, the engulfing is a good pattern. That's actually one of the top ones that I, I look for, but uh, that's actually the reason why I got into the sell for Euro JPY. I literally caught it at the, I caught it at the very tip. I actually knew that I was going to, reverse space off of like one minute this is super scalping right there um but yeah so so you can use this one and let me just check so that's uh, head and shoulders uh, all patterns so if you pull up all patterns it should be the one that's called yeah so hammer and actually if if i take all these other ones off I'm going to take them off right now. Inverted hammer is good. Shooting star. Uh, by the way, hammer and inverted hammer is basically kind of the same thing with um, the greens and the reds. Shooting star. Okay. So this right here is supposed to spot them out. Um, I would say this, this is like kind of good. Like I personally wouldn't have pointed this out, uh, even though if it does reject, but I personally wouldn't have pointed that one out. Um, like it didn't point this one out. So yeah, I would rather I, I it out myself than use these. Um, it's just my opinion. Anthony, you sent a message directly. Uh, make sure you send it to everyone, but says i came late to the zoom is there any way or where i can rewatch this zoom call are you going to uh save it and post it on youtube so youtube i think it's not going to be on there um it's going to be on like a vimeo recording so i'll share it inside of the discord so everyone can see it there uh, but you can rewatch it okay so i've been sticking to the 15 minute time frame again i'm, I'm gonna show you guys like i can even go down to the let's say the weekly Okay, now weekly takes a lot, uh, a long, um, a long move on the weekly. Like it's super long. Um, okay, so right here I do see a shooting star, and you can aim for this area of support down there, or even this area right here to. To make it an earlier 
earlier take profit. Um, entry point would have been right here. Uh, that's reverses, so it's a short. So entry point would have been right there, stop loss above the wick. Uh, take profit one could have been right there. Take profit two would have been down there. Yeah, so it's it's very consistent. Um, anywhere you see it, you'll almost always hit that take profit. Here, we can see it dropped, and I don't even have to mark it off, but it hit the support. Um, and just to show you guys proof, we can use this on, let's say, Bitcoin. So like, Okay, right here. So this candlestick right here is a shooting star. We can see the body is below that 50% mark. So that, that would be considered a shooting star. And target could be this area of support or this area right here. So you can see right there clearly like these targets were hit. Um, entry would have been right there. Stop loss a little above the wick. First one, second one. I would have aimed for the second one just because it's a one to one kind of ratio, but <clears throat> would have hit the take profit there. Uh, let's see. Man, Bitcoin just dropped, tanked right, right after it hit this, uh, broke this support, just dropped. Um, yeah, for, for this high right here, this should have been the, the point where people should have got out if you were holding on to, to Bitcoin. Um, like you could have got out right, right at the close of this week. So this week closed right there. You could close right there. If you were to short Bitcoin, um, you could add stop loss right above there and then take profit down this point right here, so either this area of resistance or this area of support down here. So yeah, you could have you could have caught that, um, or not catching it for the sale, but closing out of your profits all the way up there. So price action is definitely very important. Uh, usually for for the week. Like when I start the week, I'll look at what happened the previous week. Um, very key thing there. So if I'm on the weekly right now, like I can see what happened the previous week. So right now, this is the current week right now. This is the previous uh, week here. So has some signs of, of a reversal kind of bullish, but overall everything is bearish. So not really anything there. Um, but like, let me find one here, yes to JPY. Uh, let me see, GPAD. There was one that had something. Um, but anyways, you, you can kind of tell based off of like this. So, so let's say if there was like a shooting star right here, there's, a, there's an evening star pattern here. Um, but let's say there was a hammer right here and we're expecting for price to shoot all the way. Let's say it was a hammer, stop loss should have been down here, take profit, like let's say up here. So throughout this entire time, this is what's called my buy zone. From the point that this closed and then all the way up here, usually I have buy zones for like, when it's gonna to take too long. Like I'm not gonna hold this trade for like, this would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would have been seven weeks and it's still like down here. So throughout this entire time, I'm looking mainly for buys on the smaller time frame. So this would be my buy zone. And then when I go down to like, the daily or whatever, I'm looking for confirmation. So like right here, hammer right there. Um, hammer right in this area. 
Now, because I'm on the daily right now, this hammer would have taken a day to close out. On the next following day, I would have entered in for a buy right there. Stop loss would have been below this wick. Take profit would have been up into this resistance right there. So it would have hit its take profit right there. Good risk to reward. But this would have closed out in one, two days, three days to close out. So it's um, it, it just depends on which time frame you're on and what patterns you see. Um, if I go even smaller, like I might see something down here, but that's just like, let me see down here. So I do kind of see like a shooting uh, hammer right there. If I was to enter in for a buy on this, it would be hammer, close right there, stop loss down here, take profit up here. So it would have hit its take profit. But yeah, uh, mainly looking for buys when you see these buy zones, mainly looking for sales when you see the sell zones on shooting stars or whatever. Yeah, let's uh, let's start doing Q&A and then we're going to start ending this uh, meeting here. It's, it's um, about to be 8 o'clock PST. That's the time that I was going to stop this. So let's let's take a few questions and then we'll stop this recording. Uh, 72. Okay, so this person said, uh, can you show us one more time how you set up all patterns? All patterns, you don't have to use this. I would prefer not using it just because like, it's best to use your eye. Uh, this is just like an extra thing. So like right here, it says SS, which stands for shooting star. Does give me a shooting star pattern right there, but um, when I get in here, I would not get in for the shooting star pattern here. Even though if it's our resistance, like again, I was showing that on the bigger time frames, it's showing more of a buy for this than, than selling. Okay, any questions before we get off here? Any other questions? Uh, was there any point in your career that you felt like quitting definitely um i was actually there was one of these deaths that i had uh i remember i broke down in tears not that i'm a wuss but uh i was kind of a wuss um yeah it was it was actually during the time that i was learning i had spent somewhere around like 4,000 on a training. And it was, it, it was like, um, like I was spending on like, like advertising for that training and stuff like that. And I remember during that time, I was like, I didn't want, like, I, I wasn't seeing the results and I didn't make my return back. And like, it was like a stressful moment because I was investing like literally it was like probably 80% of my income at the time. So, uh, or 80% of my money. Uh, yeah, and as far as trading, like there's, trading is actually, um, I haven't really had a time of like quitting. Uh, with, with trading, it's like, I found it pretty fun for me. It's, it's a uh, very fascinating the way like candlesticks, um, uh, work. And it's, it's like, you see the same thing over and over again. So like, for me, I can spot the shooting star and like these, these type of candles, like really quick, there's more than that, that I have memorized. Um, to me, it's like very easy and it's like not difficult. And almost every single time, like it hits take profit and like it, it's just it's just a good feeling to know what you're doing and then just placing your trades um but i remember like there's been some depressing moments where like i take a bigger loss and this was when i was just starting off and i was just getting like familiar with taking bigger losses um because when you take like smaller losses it's like okay you, you don't really care about the money 
But once you start taking like bigger losses, you start having more like emotional attachment. And that, that had to lead to like gaining, you know, compounding your account and getting it bigger. So once you get to that point, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about there. Uh, are candlestick patterns your main go-to for manual trading? No, it's not my main go-to. Um, well, let me rephrase that. So it, it's not like I look for just that confirmation and that's it. That's not what I look for. Um, I look for multiple things. So it's like, uh, I look for more of how the price is moving. And, and this is actually very basic, but it's very important. Like if you see it's going towards a downtrend, like just go in that direction. Even if you don't see the candlestick pattern, as long as you're placing a sell on a downtrend, like you're more likely going to win the trade. So I would rather go with the direction of the trend. Um, you can get in on consolidation areas as well, but like for, consol for consolidations, it's just waiting for something to make it break out, like a news reaction or something. Uh, or break of support or resistance. <clears throat> Have you ever got cut off trade and still go your direction? Uh, Tony, I don't really understand your question there. Uh, sounds like a mix of support and resistance, candlestick patterns, and multi time frame price action. Yeah, um, yeah, it's mainly with that has has like some indicators, uh, things that I'll use are like RSI or like pivot points or, uh, but there's there's more patterns, um, there's more patterns than just like candlesticks. Uh, well, like the other patterns do involve candlesticks, but it's not like one single candlestick. Like it's a it's like a form of different candlesticks together. Like there could be a wedge, you know, like how I kind of see it here. Uh, there could be like, you know, triple top, head and shoulders, double tops, all, all the type of different patterns. Do you recommend any Forex book for beginners? Um, Forex books for beginners. I would say Trading in the Zone is a pretty good book. It's more like psychology. Uh, people with trading, they want to get rich quick. That's what I noticed, especially with margin trading, because, because with margin trading, it, it allows you to make more money. You can also lose more money. So it's important to have proper risk management and, and be in control of your trading. Um, that's why like for some people you need a bot or something that can do it for you because it'll take out the emotions. People will have tons of, even, even people with bot trading, what's crazy is like they'll have the emotions for the bots, like while it's placing its trades because it's like negative, maybe 5% or 10% or whatever. It will be in like some drawdown and then their emotions will start kicking in. Um, and it could affect the, the whole plan, like overall, because yeah, you might have, like, I think just recently there was like a, a loss. Um, there was a little loss on this day right here. It was uh, Mar May 23rd. Um, there was a little loss and I think someone took profits. So like, instead of taking that loss, they, they took their profits early. But if they continue to do that, consistently they would have taken smaller smaller profits every single time um compared to like the bigger profits that it would have taken overall if they would have waited so patience is definitely important when it comes to like stuff like this but it, that's where it takes away the emotions uh for your own trades just stick to the strategy same way with with like the bot trades it's a strategy that's being used and so you shouldn't, you shouldn't do your own, your own emotions in there, like stick to the plan and that's it. Okay. Um, 
other than that, that seems like that's all the questions. Let's see. Uh, we'll probably give it maybe three final minutes if there's any final questions here while you have me. Um, and by the way, those that have messaged inside of like Discord, I, I have a ton of like messages I haven't gone through. Uh, yeah, just been, there is like literally so many messages. I, I just can't. To go through everything would take me like a couple, couple hours, I think. Um, how does it feel to be financially free? That's a good question. Does anyone treat you differently since you are considered wealthy? Anything you expect to happen? Um, so it's definitely a good feeling. Um, I don't have like an alarm clock. I uh, wake up at my own time. I go to sleep whenever I want. So it's good to have structure sometimes, but like just the fact that I don't have to do anything is, is really, really relaxing. Um, and I've actually been focused more on automating most of my income. So I don't have to like physically trade every single time. Um, because like my, my main purpose when I got into trading was so I can make a lot of money, but also be able to enjoy my, my time. And if I'm constantly working, 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 like how can I enjoy my time? Right. So being financially free, uh, doesn't necessarily mean like that you make a lot of money, but you don't have time. Like you have to make money and you have to have time. That's where the free part comes in. So, um, so that's to answer your question there. And then does anyone treat me differently? Sometimes, uh, sometimes it depends on what I'm wearing, I would say, because there's sometimes where I'm dressed like very normal and I just get treated regular. So just depends. Uh, and then there's like, sometimes like two days ago, there was like a, a driver at a, um, there was a driver that was like risky ricky like just kind of calling me out i didn't know who he was but he was it's kind of cool to be known a bit uh but let's see anything you expect to happen i don't know exactly what you mean by that thank you appreciate this is very helpful and by the way appreciate you guys for taking the time here i see a lot of you guys stuck in um stuck into the training and and stayed in there's probably like a couple that that left probably had to go do something some people couldn't make it or whatever. Uh, okay, so you recommend stacking the bot frequently. So it depends on what you mean by stacking the bot. Stacking trades, I would suggest not stacking trades, especially if you're not experienced, don't stack trades. Um, but when it comes to the bot, like once you hit 100%, just withdraw your initial investment and then keep whatever you have in there, um, the, the profit money. And this way you'll never take a loss. Rule number one with investing is never to lose money. I think that's something uh, Warren Buffett says. And then rule number two is like, is rule number one <laughs> or follow rule number one, something like that. Uh, any other bot you have planned? The near future and thanks um but in the near future no uh this ai is is like my main thing it's like my go-to it's uh it's what brings in a good amount of money like there was one of the days it was like 72k uh which is pretty nice and yeah, it's very consistent. Um, and as far as like the type of losses, it won't really take any losses. Now I can't guarantee future results, but based off of like everything that that I've been um, doing, it is really good. I trust a large amount of, my, uh, of money in there. And let's see. How's the prop firm coming along? Gold digger. Um, right now we're still we're still testing the gold digger stuff. So that 
that's actually, I would say something that's coming in the future um, is like a gold trading, um, gold trading setting for the auto trader stuff. Uh, let's see, what's the difference between ATM and AI? <laughs> okay, so same pairs, but risky. Yeah, so ATM, and, and I'll actually pull it up right here. Uh, ATM, ATM, one sec. Uh, ATM, okay. <laughs> so you can see on my screen right here. So the gain shows negative 96%, right? Um, doesn't mean it's actually like overall, uh, if, if you can see, so I'll just pull up the balance. So on April 28th, it started off with a thousand dollar balance. Uh, it was like a thousand one. Okay. One, one K balance. You can see April 29th. Okay. So May 2nd, it went to 1,200 and something, one, 1,500, 1,800. Uh, 3,600. So I flipped the 1K into 3,000, uh, 1K into 3,000, and then I withdrew 1,600. Okay. Uh, withdrew 1,600, and then it did take a loss. So the account balance was at like around 4K, uh, and then it took a loss. Right? It, um, some of you guys were probably there during that, that one, losing, one losing day. Uh, and then after that losing day, I funded 1,000. So still overall, I'm up 600, right? Unless I lose this 1,000 that I put in, then I'm down like a couple hundred. But so now the 1,000 is reloaded and then it's running again. So did take like a little bit of a loss uh, on Sunday, I believe. And then today... Well, after like the, the trades and everything, it should, it should be like 1,200. Like what, once it reaches 100%, basically you want to withdraw. But this is a higher risk one. I actually tuned down the risk a bit because uh, it literally did like 1K to 4K in like a week. So that's, that's crazy, crazy returns. Um, even if we saw like, 500% return in, in a month, like that's good. Um, so that's what we're aiming here. But this is, this is gonna be the high risk stuff. So ATM is high risk. The profit system AI is going to be more, um, more like, uh, I wouldn't say slow and consistent because if you hit 20% for the month, that's not slow. Like this is actually really good returns. With compound, like you just let it continue going. Uh, and we're actually right now, we're averaging around 81% monthly uh, is what it's showing here and somewhere around 2% daily um, based off the stats. So, so far pretty good. Uh, stacking trades on top of bot. Yeah, don't stack trades on top of bot. Um, and I would suggest not placing any personal trades with the bot. <clears throat> what makes you feel this bot or quit this bot? We need you to keep this bot active between us. I don't know what you mean, but I'm keeping it active and I'm making lots of money. At what point do you start to worry when AI drawdown is too much? Do you worry? And if ever, do you interfere? Yeah, intervene? No, I don't. Um, I don't worry. There is, there is something on the back end um, has to do with like market orders and uh, insider stuff that I can, that I know price is going to reverse uh, when it does have its drawdown, which is why if you see all those times that it's had some drawdown, like the, the most right here was like on March 30th, um, March 30th, so there was this uh, drawdown here. Yeah, it's it's just suggested to um, 
let it do its thing. I, I have faith in it. Still planning on offering AI for a couple of years. Yes, I would say, I'd say at least one year. Um, there's been a couple, a couple offers to buy it out. I actually declined recently, like a 1.3 mil offer. Um, so yeah, as of now, it's just doing its thing. Yeah, I placed trades last month, went from 450, 50, then bought, brought me back to 300 from 50. Yeah. All right, you guys, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, hope you guys got some value there. And if you need anything, just reach out on, on Discord. Don't message me privately, but you know, put in the ask questions area or sometimes I'll be inside the traders lounge or the, the private um, premium area. Yeah. Thank you guys. Have yourself a good night. We'll talk later. See ya.